Good morning, everyone, to another wonderful episode here, Jaws Podiatry. Since our last <clears throat> toe shortening uh, case that we posted all throughout social media, we have had an influx of questions, people reaching out through not only Facebook, our YouTube channel, but also through directly through email, uh, people from all around the world. The last case that we did, as everyone may or may not recall, we did uh, two bilateral toe shortening procedures. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make this one uh, short and sweet. I will try. So, you know, when I first started my career at the beginning, cosmetic foot surgery, I was very interested in, in the cosmetic aesthetic uh, aspect of, of foot surgery and it was sort of taboo at the beginning right even though I went to conferences re you know related to that and and I kept on uh, doing my due diligence about um, aesthetic foot surgery uh, all throughout the states doctors that were doing it doctors that weren't doing it and and I really you know familiarized myself with aesthetic foot surgery now, I, I do like the word aesthetic. I don't like the word cosmetic. I think that, you know, after I graduated, uh, and, you know, unfortunately throughout my residency program and my training, I did not have the good fortune to train with someone that did that type of work. But nonetheless, you know, in my short career, in the last 11 years, I've done, uh, I've, I've been able to, to combine, right, what I like to call function and aesthetics function and aesthetics. It's it's a hybrid approach. Function because the patient is coming in for for a problem, right? It's it's a it's a painful problem. And then aesthetics because the appearance of the toe does not look like the others. The other the other what? The other toes. So throughout the years I've been able to combine function and aesthetics, which is, which is the key, right? We don't do surgery to do surgery. There has to be an element of discomfort, pain. When do we, and everyone has heard me in the past, when do we consider surgery? When the pain from the structural abnormality starts to affect daily life activities. In the case that I'm gonna to present to you guys today, the pain, right? is affecting the patient's daily life activities. The patient has a very bilateral, and it usually is, and I've said it, uh, and I did present it last time. The patient presents with a Morton's type foot, which is the most common type of foot that we see when it comes to long toes. That the second toe is longer than all the others. In addition to the long toes, the patient presents with an extremely painful corn, seated corn to the fifth toe on the left. Patients on her feet every day, not only are the shoes really tight and rubbing against the, the corn, which is causing excru excruciating pain, but also the second toes are too long and what's happening is that they're they're hitting the tip of the of the shoe, right? The front part of the shoe. And the problem is that she already tried going a half size larger, but what's the problem? Then the foot starts to to move back and forth, back and forth. And it starts to hit and that causes also pain. So damn if you do, damn if you don't. So what's the problem? The patient is young and I had you know, we're very transparent here. I did tell her she came in at the right time because what could happen eventually, the jamming, right now she has a mallet toe. She doesn't have a hammer toe, but eventually that can, you know, if, if you don't address and assess the problem, it could lead to a really painful hammer toe, which in the future, if the patient decides to get it corrected, the approach would be different. So we can do this, right? using uh, what we call, again, I, you guys have heard me say it, the MIFAS approach, the minimally invasive foot and ankle surgical approach, the techniques. Let's take a look at the study, please. The study, I mean the case study. Okay, so as everyone can see here, um, I've, drawn out, uh, I've drawn out the parabola, 
right? And instead of the parabola being like that and like this, we can all see that right here when we get to the second toe, right? And if you look at it from the top, come around here. Hey. Come, come, come from the top, the top, so everyone can get an appreciation here. Okay? Everyone can see how, how the second toe is longer than not only the great toe, but also all the others significantly. So there's uh, the, the, the parabola here is broken, so to speak. Let's go to the left. Same thing. So our goal, our goal is to shorten, right, the left and the right to make sure that we can achieve this and this parabola. That's the goal. Let's take a look at the left fifth toe. Come around here, Lisbeth. Let's show everyone. Come, come from the other side. Like. Yeah. Like. Right there, exactly. Make sure that we get that right there. So the patient has, I don't know if anyone can see here. Let's make sure it's nice and clear. She's got a really painful corn right there, extremely. And I'll show everyone the x-rays after and then I'll and then I'll definitely implement this the the next video I'll go ahead and edit it so everyone can appreciate the x-rays that's where we really see what's going on so I think this is a fantastic case um, I'm really happy that the patient uh, did find us after seeing two other clinicians and uh, I'll keep everyone afloat on this case so like always www.jawspodiatry.com. You know what? I'm not even going to close because I'm going to edit the next one. So I'll, I'll go ahead and, and make the closing later. Thank you. So just like I promised everyone, um, this is just a continuation of the previous uh, video that we recorded earlier today. And, and I think that, you know, now a lot of people will be able to appreciate um, the clinical presentation. So... Let's first take a look at the second toe. So this is obviously the tip of the toe. And I think that everyone can actually now appreciate the length, right, of this toe versus all the other lesser toes. And not only that, it's not that that significant of a difference, right? When we look at the, the second and the first, the great toe and the second toe. But believe it or not, if the, if the shoe is right here, it will definitely hit the second toe, not the first, not the great toe. So, you know, our goal is to shorten the toe just a little bit, right? To avoid that toe, the tip of the toe, the distal pulp from actually jamming right into the front part of the shoe. Now, let's talk a little bit about the painful corn. Uh, the reason why the patient has the painful corn is because the patient, and let me zoom in a little bit here, the patient has a, a bone spur right there and also this middle phalanx, right? We have one, two, and three. The middle phalanx is, is also contributing to the lesion. This is a marker that we place there, right? It's a little staple just so we know exactly where the lesion is and what is causing the problem. And until proven otherwise, we have this bone spur and also all of this. So these two bony prominences are what's contributing to this excruciatingly painful corn slash callus. So this gives you a better idea of the left foot, the clinical presentation of the left foot. Let's take a look at the right. Okay, so let's take a look at the right. The, the right second toe, you guys cannot appreciate this very much, but 
the problem here is that the toe is actually already like this, right? Without the hammer toe, it's kind of like that. That's why the tip of the toe, right, the bone, one, two, three, the third bone is actually already looking down. That's the problem. And that's why you can't really appreciate the length of the toe in comparison to the uh, all the others, even though the parabola starts here. Uh-oh. So you guys can imagine from here all the way down the difference in length, right? Let's take a look at another view. Sorry, the other way. And again, that just gives you another another different view of the clinical presentation. Part of the problem is that the patient has, look at, compare the, the middle phalanx, right, the length of it to these. So these bone, the middle bone here, is much longer in length than all the others, right? And you can really appreciate this When we actually look, if I can find it here, look at the length of the middle one here. Look at this one. This one's double the size of this one. This is very interesting. It's an extremely interesting case for people to really understand, okay, the, the clinical presentation from a radiographic standpoint. I hope this has brought a lot of clarity to, to the entire case study. We will be performing this procedure probably very, very soon, and I will keep everyone afloat. Like always, www.jawspodiatry.com. Facebook, Jaws Podiatry, Instagram, Dr. Toe Jam, and last but not least, Jaws Healthcare YouTube channel. Like always, thank you for watching. One last thought. When we talk about aesthetic and function, these procedures, toe shortening, procedures, bunionectomies, the mini toe tuck or the toe tuck. These are extremely challenging, intricate and delicate procedures. Not all surgeons are created equal. Um, I think I'm talking more to uh, all of our subscribers on YouTube or not. One of my mentors when I was in residency, told me, he said, Abraham, listen, if, if you want to become really proficient at calcaneal fractures, you need to do a lot of them. If you want to become really proficient at performing ankle fractures, you need to do a lot of them. And the same applies to what we continue to do here at JAWS Podiatry, whether it's minimally invasive surgery or whether it's aesthetic foot surgery, it's extremely important for everyone to understand to please perform their own due diligence before they do anything. Like I said before, not all surgeons are created equal and you want to make sure that you make the right decision in if you decide to have any type of any type of procedure whether aesthetic or not to perform your own due diligence which is exactly what I would tell any of my family members I hope this helps and I simply wanted to to share these thoughts with with everyone I hope everyone has a wonderful night. Thank you for watching.